What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another uh, part into our uh, cutting out a PSD into an HTML file. Today we're going to be laying out a rotator um, and then the next part we're going to be cutting it out as a jQuery plugin. So initially looking at our rotating element, we have uh, two pager uh, buttons or elements uh, and then our main section for the rotator. How I'm going to cut this out um, each one of these slides is going to be 960 pixels wide, and I, if I remember right, it's about 430 pixels or 420 pixels tall. Um, and so the way we're going to do that is each slide is going to be that size, and we're going to apply a background image to it, which will be these uh, devices. Um, that way we can position them wherever they want. Uh, so if other slides uh, have elements in different areas we can use the background positioning for that and we can customize the positioning of the text for that also um, so right now in our cutout we have nothing um, we're going to need to plug in the buttons and um, actually code out the CSS for the layout I already have the forwards backwards buttons in the slide.png so we're not going to be doing anything inside of here outside of um, checking for um, the actual like positions and margins and stuff. So, all right, let me. Okay. So inside of our HTML, um, let me. We actually need to code out our elements. Let me scroll up to where that is. So directly inside our rotator, we need to have. Uh, previous and next button. These don't need to be inside a, an, another element or anything like that. So I'm going to um, type out two hyperlinks, give them a class of previous and next, and then when you actually need to uh, type out our rotating elements. How we are going to do this is that we are going to have I'm going to have a div that acts as kind of like a picture frame um, for this section and then behind it we are going to have an ordered list that goes off the screen with floating elements. Um, this way we can position the top of the unordered list and slide it from left to right and only the section inside of our uh, picture frame for, for lack of a better term that I can think of right now any, anything inside the frame is the only uh, piece visible to our user <laughs> so I'm gonna to do that we need to have uh, our what I'm gonna be calling our frame I'm going to give it a class of rotator wrapper then our unordered list and inside of it we're going to denote the slide um, so and then inside of it we're going to give it a div which uh, we'll use this div to do the positioning on it since uh, I'm, I'm essentially be going to be creating the same div or the same slide three times so we can make sure everything works it's just going to be using a, a play div. We could be using um, a header tag with a uh, or a div with a class. So copy this over. Then copy this block of HTML two more times. And rename it. that already had the div in it, so fix that up real fast. If we go over to our HTML, see that all of our, no, I need to rename the slides also. Just a note, so that we have a visual indicator that we are on a different slide. <laughs> Now, to we're going to apply the actual CSS to these. We're going to start off with the buttons. Um, let's see here. 
first I want to make sure that our element is okay we do have a relative position on our rotator how relative position works so if this entire container is given a position relative so what that means is that this I, I see this is kind of a, a reset for the area if we we're going to be giving a, a, a style position absolute to these um, buttons and when you give a, an element position absolute your you have the ability to set exactly where it shows up pixel by pixel um, it's a little bit more difficult to do that with floats um, using a relative position is, is a very accurate way to position items where you want it's also how you can get uh, elements to float so say for it at the uh, top of your screen uh, it's a, it's it's a, it's it's, it's kind of how uh, sometimes social widgets and stuff like that work <laughs> um, so for instance right here if this entire container is set to position relative um, the way we would get the way we would position this element is we'd say it's uh, from the right it's 35 or I'm sorry 97 pixels we could do from the top is 178 but there's another way you can perfectly vertically align an element and that's uh, give it a top uh, top or bottom of 50 percent and then give it a negative margin of half the the height or width of the element that way it'll if your container ever changes height um, it's going to move with it now if you don't have a, a relative positioned element and you gave the position absolute with a, a top zero right zero this element's going to show up right up here because um, the the quote the the relative positioned element uh, then becomes the HTML tag or body tag and so um, we're going to use it in this instance to um, for our um, slider uh, for our slider control back here the the very wide frame and then our buttons over here so I'm going to type out our uh, class uh, rules for um, the rotator uh, buttons. We have uh, <laughs> I already cut out the images so I'm just going to use the a drag and drop for the background image so I don't mess it up. I'm going to set it to display block due to hyperlinks or being an inline element. Height for the elements are 60 pixels. Uh, they are about 50 pixels I believe. So I would say, let's say 50. There are 100 pixels from the side. <laughs> um, for some reason I had 50. I've been looking at the, the wrong one. So this one is going to be positioned 100 pixels from the left of the, the screen. It's going to have a margin top of negative 30 to provide that vertical centering it's going to be position absolute top 50 percent its width is going to be 60 pixels there we go. so we have it right there now if we resize this well it it's not going to show up as well. It, uh, we'll be able to see it better with the the right pager. <laughs> um, I'll shrink and bring uh, open up the, sc the screen a little bit and uh, show that the uh, right element is going to maintain its uh, position. tab over and press F5 so you see here that 
no matter where we go, no matter what the screen size is, this is going to maintain 100 pixels from this side. <laughs> And now we need to code out our rotator wrapper um, and our unordered list and our uh, rotator list items. Rotate. So the height of our element is 420 pixels. Um, that's the height we're going to be using on any elements inside of this. Um, due to height of our container being right at 420 pixels. I'm going to give it a margin of 0 and auto. This way it's center uh, aligned. Its width is 960 pixels. And we're also going to give it an overflow of hidden. But I'm going to add that shortly so that you can, uh, you can see uh, you can get a better visual under, uh, visual representation of uh, what we're doing behind the scenes. So, a rotator unordered list. It's going to be a position absolute. So we're going to be uh, dynamically uh, setting its uh, left attribute to give the uh, appearance of rotating. Give it a top of zero just so that um, it knows to ha to be zeroed out like that. We're going to give it a width of 2,000 EMs. Um, this is uh, this is to ensure that we don't have wrapping or anything like that on uh, on our list items. Uh, EMs are kind of a it's what's the best way to 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 describe it? Um, they're not exact. Um, pixels. It's kind of based on relative, uh, relatively where it, uh, relative to its surroundings. Um, I typically avoid them. Um, I see them a lot in using uh, font elements or font styles. Uh, so let's say, for instance, you give a uh, your base font of um, 16 pixels, and then you inside your body tag and then you give uh, like a paragraph tag of a font size of 1.1 EM uh, I'm not sure the exact translation but it will uh, give it give it a like a font size of maybe 18 or 19 um, due to the um, yeah due to um, its its parent one being 16 um, there are articles out there that can explain it a heck of a lot better than I can. <laughs> All right, so um, if we look at our screen right now, we notice that we are um, we have one just enormously wide frame, um, and I think I think we update that. But um, but anyway, um, you can see that our three slides show up right here uh, from left to right. I'm going to uh, code out uh, styles specific to each of these slides since we're doing the same one over and over again. Um, I'm just going to use the same styles for it. Um, I'm going to have the same background image for the slide. And I'm going to just go ahead and copy that piece in. So we have a large font size, uh, line height is set to 1.5, um, I believe our default line height is 1, so I can't remember if that's defaults to the browser size, uh, browser line height, or if it's relative to the font size, but by doing 1.5 EMs you'll see that our line height is, uh, is fairly, uh, it adds a lot of space to It has a lot of space in between each one of our lines. So right now we, we actually see each one of our slides um, uh, uh, moving out to the to the right. Now I'm going to add the overflow hidden back to our rotator wrapper. And we 
go back here, refresh, maybe. Oh, I hit a hashtag and so it won't refresh. Oh, yay, what did I put wrong? I spell something. Rotator, rotator, ever hidden. It's back to element. I've obviously missed something here. And I'm not really sure what right now. Let's see here. Let me look back over. That's real fast. See if maybe a doubt Chrome's gonna render it any differently. All right, I'm gonna pause real fast until I figure this out. All right, well that took all of two seconds. Um, I had missed adding uh, position relative to my um, my frame, my item frame, um, since this is what this is gonna be our reference point for the slides. Um, this is where we needed to set that uh, that relative positioning. If we had done it to, if we had done that to the main wrapper, our slides would be starting way over here, and we'd need to keep track of various things um, that would overcomplicate our code. So we now have our um, our our. Uh, rotator laid out and next we are going to be doing a quick uh, jQuery rotator plugin uh, to get this to have the absolute basic functionality we need to go forward with so thanks for the view and we'll see you in a few